I'm at the only koala hospital in the world, watching a koala rescued from Australia's bushfires. This is what the hottest year on record looks like. As thousands are evacuated from their homes, it's the wild animals who are left with no safety plan. Scientists are estimating close to 1 billion animals have died in the current bushfires. And now one of this country's most iconic species is vulnerable to extinction. Deforestation and disease have already decimated koala populations. But with a crippling drought turning their disappearing habitat into a tinderbox, how long have they got? These are all the rehabilitation animals that we have. We've got ICU, which I'll take you through, and then we've got the exhibited ones where you've got all the visitors. Oh, come look. We've got a koala crisis. Oh, poor little guy. Come on, Austin. That's a boy. You can tell this one's really injured, eh? Do you see the burn marks on the arms? I think we worry more than what they do yeah. because they do this all the time. They live in trees, but our motherly instinct comes out. That's yeah. a problem. You've worked here for how many years? Seven years. And what have the past three months been like for you in comparison? Oh my gosh, it's been a roller coaster. It's been um, on the go. It's been a big learning curve because I didn't come in, um, never experienced a bushfire uh, before to this extent. Didn't know what we do to them. Since the bushfires flared up in November, the hospital has received 49 new patients. And is this where the most critical animals are? All of this fur is eventually going to fall off. Okay. So underneath this is all of this. It's going to be in So She's got a long way. It takes up to about nine months. And when did she first come in? She came in probably about, um, I'm just trying to think now, about six, six weeks ago. And where are the most common places on their body that they get burned? Oh, hands, hands, feet, rear, chin, around the eyes as well, the heat. It seems like koalas have all the odds stacked against them. They do, they're a very unique animal and they, they are, they've just, yeah, they have got it's just a solitary little animal that minds its own business, sitting in a tree, eating leaf, and they've got so much hassle. They really do. It's thought that 30% of Australia's koalas have been wiped out in this deadly fire season. This one's really lucky to have been able to have been brought in, but there's so many that lost their lives. These bushfires have been absolutely devastating for the koala populations. And the reality is, this planet is only getting hotter. So how can we make sure that this iconic animal survives? From out of these areas, out of these enclosures, they go onto different enclosures which are actually open, which yeah. is around the corner here and then we observe them climbing. Especially it's important on the ones that have had injuries to their uh, limbs. You know, are they climbing up? Are they climbing high? And why is it important that the distance that they climb? Because the higher the koala in the tree, the healthier it is. And can that height protect them during the bushfires? Depending on the type of fire, okay? If you've got the low intensity fires, which is basically the scrub fire that comes through down below, they will go up high, that's not a problem. But the fires that we've had are called crowning fires, which are intense fires which are traveling up the top of the tree. The koala will stay up there and it is, it's gonna burn. It's, you know, it, even if it comes down, it will burn because the trunk's been burnt. So it's really a really awful situation that they're, that they're in. They, they just can't save themselves. A crippling drought is depleting the nutrients from the koala's only food source, the eucalyptus leaf. What's going on with her? Now, she's also um, a burns victim, okay. but she's developed chlamydia. Oof. Okay, so okay. we're going to pop down here. Oh, the way. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Wait, what do you do for it? I used to be in customer service. Really? Mm. Now you're giving injections to now get, yeah. But you're doing it so confidently. Well, yeah, that's the appearance. Would you have imagined, what? Never. 10, I would 15 not, years ago no, that you would oh, be working in a koala hospital? No, never, ever. Absolutely love it. I would not change it for the world. Really critical koalas need round-the-clock home care. Hello. We've lost over 300. You know, I've been here in a bushfire before where we've had a bushfire in exactly the same area, but we didn't lose that many. They were just incinerated. The fires have been too hot. It just breaks your heart to think about. All right, sit there. Look here. It's 
dinner time. Okay. Get him started. He's a real sloppy eater. Oh, bless him. And what kind of condition was he in when he first came oh, over? Well, his ears were all burned off. He didn't have a black nose. His nose was red raw. All under his chin, all his, all his paws were burnt, his feet. And what kind of care have you been giving him to get him to this place? <laughs> Sit down. Oh, you guys are close, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you can try. There, just just push it out nice and slowly. There That's you it. go. You can do it a little bit faster than that. So every three days, you have to take change the bandages on his feet and and uh, put the cream on his feet so that it would heal. Go their back. burns were terrible. All of them had oh, had think? their feet, and you can see. He's lost a lot of claws. That means he probably won't be releasable. And are you worried about the future of this species? I do worry about them. Up until the fires have, have sort of thrown this light on them and, and their plight, um, in urban areas like, like here and other urban developers, they're cutting down their trees and building housing estates. Could you imagine this country without this so, animal? Well, I, I couldn't and I can't understand why politicians don't understand that either. <laughs>